Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Militado ML06. This watch is available from MilitadoWatch.com for 105 US dollars, which is 99 euro. The watch is clearly an homage to the Tudor Black Bay 58. So firstly, let's look at the hard shell travel case that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the specifications of the piece. So the watch comes in this Militado branded hard shell travel case, which has Militado embossed. It's got a carbon fibre effect to it, which is very aesthetically pleasing. Good attention to detail, because if you look at the zipper pull, you can see it has Militado embossed in contrasting white rubber. So it's good quality, and I'm pleased to see Militado make the effort of producing a good quality travel case, rather than just using the default option of a cardboard box, because this is a low tier piece costing only €99. Euro. In the base we have a foam cutout piece and underneath the lid we have an elasticated webbed pocket which houses two items that I'll show you. So we have the international guarantee card and I'm pleased to report that this piece, the ML06, is covered by a two year international warranty. Often at this price point, €99, Euro, one would expect 12 months warranty. To get two years of warranty is very good. And this is the owner's instruction manual, clear concise diagrams and the instructions are in English. It details the operation of the movement use, which is the Seiko NH35A automatic. And lastly, one also gets this stainless steel spring bar tool. Nice knurl chank to it. It has a push pin at one end for pushing out bracelet pins. And on the other end, we have a two prong fork for remo removing spring bars. So good to get that included. So with regards to the dimensions, we have a 38 millimeter case diameter. We have a lug to lug measurement of 46 millimeters. We have a thickness of 13.3 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters. The Oyster style bracelet, which has rivet links on the flanks, tapers from 20 millimeters at the lugs down to 16 millimeters at the flip lock clasp. It's got a Rolex style flip lock clasp, but it doesn't have any glide lock mechanism. It simply has four dimples in the internals of the flanks to allow for four micro adjustment positions. So this is clearly a cross cutting measure. It's also sterile. I would like to see Militado engrave it with the brand logo or the brand emblem because this cost cutting measure really is a disappointment, although one has to expect some production cost cutting because this is only 99 euro and the specification is strong. Double dome sapphire crystal with clear AR coating on the underside. It has a boxed top hat profile to the double dome sapphire crystal, which is very aesthetically pleasing. Very similar to a Tudor, Tudor Black Bay 58, which this is an homage to. And I really like it. It's got nice clarity to it and it's got a nice profile to the box profile. As you can see, slight distortion when you tilt it at an oblique angle, but when you look at it straight on, it gives perfect clarity. And the AR coating does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the mirror polished applied indices and the mirror polished snowflake handsets, which are correctly proportioned. So this weighs 147 grams with all the links in the Oyster style rivet link bracelet. So the weight of the watch is comfortable to wear for 38 millimeter. Anything beneath 150 grams is comfortable to wear for long periods of time, such as eight to 12 hours per day. And bear in mind that is with all the links and this does have excessive links. Even I would remove two links from the long bracelet and that would reduce it to circa 130 to 135 grams. So the heft is correct. BGW9 Superluminova on the applied indices and also the snowflake hand, so that is the correct choice. And 200 meters of water resistance. So let's test the screw down crown execution. Knurled finish to the solid 316 arc grade stainless steel crown and we have a mirror polished domes cap to it. No sharp edges to it, no burrs, it's very well finished. Quality control is good. However, this is another cost cutting measure. I would prefer to see an embossed Militado brand emblem uh, or alternatively engraved into the crown because a sterile crown is a cost cutting measure but however one has to expect some cost cutting bear in mind this is a low tier price point piece at 99 euro so let's test the execution unscrewing it feels smooth now it's not silky smooth one can feel the resistance of the threading but it does feel smooth the internal thread meshes and interfaces very well with the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube so it's done well, the quality control is good, 
Well, one can feel the friction of the 316L grade stainless steel and 316L grade stainless steel rubbing together. So there is room for improvement. It does feel smooth, although one can feel friction. So this uses the NH35A, therefore it does have a phantom date setting position. I would like to see Militado use the NH38 because that is the no date version of the NH35A. That would delete the date complication because we do have the phantom date setting position. There are two clicks on the crown. I would prefer the NH38 because it only has one click for setting the time. So unscrewing the crown, we can now manually wind the movements. One can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up to its maximum 41 hour power reserve. Feels smooth. The NH35A is one of my personal favourites. It's reliable, well proven workhorse movement. No reliability issues whatsoever. Manual winding feels nice and firm, and I like it. So, first click position is the phantom date setting position. When you rotate the crown anti clockwise in the first click position, you can feel the date wheel moving around and the quick set dates clicking over to each day of the month. Pulling it out to the second click position hacks the movement. If you look at the snowflake second hand, you can see it's now stopped dead, so it's possible to set the time precisely to the second. So we're now in the time setting position. And as you can see, nice firm resistance to the gearing in the NH35A. Feels the same clockwise and anti-clockwise, minimal back play, nice tight gearing. I like the feeling of the NH35A. The main thing I really like about it is the reliability. It's a very robust movement. They don't break down and they're just a very well made movement. So feels good to set the time. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click and that restarts the movement. You can see the snowflake second hand begins to sweep around the dial once again. Let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup, which is good. So the threads interface, they mesh very well. The internal thread of the stainless steel crown picks up with the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube immediately, but one can feel the friction. Some of the friction isn't down to the threading. It's down to the use of thick rubber gaskets. There's one gasket inside the crown and there's another rubber o-ring gasket inside the crown tube itself. So it has two rubber o-ring gaskets and that provides a hermetic seal to 200 meters. So it's good to see they're using thick gaskets. I can feel the gaskets compress. So I'm absolutely confident in the 200 meters of hermetic seal. So some of the friction is caused by the gaskets, but however, some of it is caused by the threading. So there is room for improvement, although it is smooth. Right, so 120 click unidirectional crown, uh, unidirectional bezel, as one would expect. Nice low profile solid 316L grade stainless steel coin edge finish to it, as per the Black Bay 58. Nice crisp high definition coin edge finishing. I like that it's got no sharp edges. The tips to the coin edge finishing don't feel sharp. Often on low tier pieces with coin edge bezels, the coin edging feel, feels rough, it feels sharp because the teeth aren't the bird. There's no chamfer on the top edge, but this has been correctly chamfered. Nice crisp high definition uh, coin edge finishing, which is grippy and tactile, but doesn't have sharp points to each of the coin edge grooves. So they've done a good job with the finishing. So let's test the execution. 120 click, nice and firm. I like the resistance of the rusting mechanism. It's not a sloppy bezel action, it feels nice and tight. It feels even all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation, which is good. It doesn't get tight and loose. Nice, loud, audible clicks. In terms of resistance and the sound of it, it feels and sounds like a Seiko bezel action on a 5KX that you'll be familiar with. I like the loud audible clicks, feels like a nice heavy ratcheting mechanism and I like the medium firm resistance to it. No lateral side to side play whatsoever, I'm just going to check it in four positions. It feels nice and tight, so no lateral side to side play is good. That makes a refreshing change with a low tier piece costing 99 euro, one would expect some side to side lateral play. No back play whatsoever, it feels nice and tight. So I like it. Let's just check the alignment. Perfect. Actually, we can go one more click, sorry. Now it's perfect. I'll just check it two more times because I like to check the alignment of a bezel three times for consistency. Because sometimes you can find, when you're reviewing watches, the bezel doesn't always align three out of three times. It will do it maybe one or tw once or twice, but Right, so that's one off. Next click, aligned. I'll just check a final time. 
Because when I level criticism at a brand for incorrect bezel execution, I like to be consistent. So I always check three out of three times just to be sure. Good. Yes, the loom pip and triangle aligns correctly with the 12 o'clock index on the dial and the 60 minute tick on the chapter ring. So, no lateral side to side play, no back play and perfect alignment. They deserve credit for this because on a low tier piece costing 99 euro, this is good bezel execution. So I'm very pleased with that. Right, so let's look at the bracelet. Nicely finished, brush satin finish has a nice luster to the top side underside and that contrasts with the mirror polishing to the flanks as per the Tudor Black Bay 58, which this is an homage to. They've made the correct decision by using female pivoted end links rather than male end links because the female pivoted end links allowed the bracelet to articulate very well and it gives a nice snug fit underneath the 46 mm lug to lug measurement. Now, the bracelet is well finished. No sharp edges, no burrs, doesn't pull arm hairs, so it's very well done. Doesn't have excessive play, doesn't rattle. The links are good. The screw pins are a good tolerance to the links in the bracelet. But however, there is a main negative to this bracelet and it's the end links. The actual end links themselves have lateral side to side play in between the lugs. So they're 20 millimeter, as one would expect, but they're slight slack. The end links are slightly undersized for the 20 mm lug width and one can hear that rattle because they slide left and right and they also slide up and down. So they're not a snug fit, the tolerance is not good. Militado need to tighten up on that with the quality control. The tolerances need to be finer because I'll just check the other one for comparison. One can feel the rattle. This one's exactly the same. So the end link moves up and down, you see and also side to side because it's just not a tight fit. It should be an interference fit. Now the profiling, the curve of the end link perfectly matches the tops of the lugs. So they've done a good job with the, pro the profiling, but however, it's just a disappointment with the fit. There's another problem with it. If you look at the center links and the female pivoted end links, they do articulate smoothly, but the problem is the holes are too large. You see the center link wobbling around the spring bar. The hole is drilled too big. So as you can see, we've got side to side play, up and down play, and also lateral side to side play. So it rattles. And it's a shame because the bracelet itself, the links feel good. They articulate smoothly. They don't feel too loose. They don't kink. They're actually very nicely finished. The brass satin finishing is good. The mirror polishing is good. And the rivets don't have any sharp edges to it. Also the slot head, the slotted screw head pins in the rivet links, they're also well finished. They don't feel sharp. There's no sharp burrs. So they've done a good job with the finishing to the bracelet. It's just disappointing that the hole in the center link in the female pivoted end links is too loose. It needs to be tighter to fit tight around the spring bar. As you can see, there's significant play. And the problem is that makes the bracelet rattle at the end link end on either side of the head of the piece. And it's noticeable. So they need to improve on that. That's the main negative. Let's look at the clasp in detail. So we've got a flip block clasp, which is Rolex style. Mirror polishing uh, is done to high standard on the top side, underside and flanks, as you can see. Looks very similar to a Rolex glide lock clasp, although there is no glide lock mechanism. So no sharp edges, no burrs, the hinge pins are tight, so that's good. However, cross-cutting measure is the absence of a easy link style extension. There's no diver's extension link, and also we only have four dimples inside the flanks. So that allows for four micro adjustment positions, but we don't have a glide lock style mechanism. I would like to see Militado upgrade to using the watch dives glide lock style clasp that I previously reviewed because that is excellent and it's inexpensive. It retails at €8.29. So even if what Militado increased the retail price of this ML06 by ten euro, collectors would happily pay for it to have a glide lock style clasp because that would further enhance this piece. And as it uses a 20 to 16 millimeter bracelet, the uh, glide lock style clasp from watch dives would fit this directly with no modifications so that wouldn't increase the production costs for Militado. It would be worth paying 110 euro to have a glide lock style clasp versus this at 99. 
But the four micro adjustments do work okay. The spring bar is easy to move because we can get good access to it with a spring bar tool to depress both ends, unlike a Pagani design PD1661 clasp, which I showed in my Glidelock style clasp review. There's only one slot in the end link. So easy to adjust, but only four dimples, and I prefer to see a Glidelock style clasp used. Snap shut with a nice positive click. On a positive note, no sharp edges, no burrs, doesn't have sharp corners, doesn't have sharp ends. So it's very well finished. The deburring and the chamfering is very good. Mirror polishing is good. Luster is good. Right, so I'll give you a wrist shot and you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now, I haven't sized the bracelet and I'm pleased to report that even with my large 8 inch wrist, you can see there are plenty of additional links. I can actually slide two fingers underneath, so this will fit up to a 9 inch wrist with no difficulties whatsoever. Even I would remove two to three links from this. And bear in mind, this is on full extension. I'm on the number four micro adjustment position. So this is the bracelet at its absolute maximum. And if you remove say two to three links, that will reduce it to circa 130 to 135 grams. So the heft of this piece is good. It's not too heavy. It feels balanced. It doesn't feel top heavy on wrist. Relatively low profile because it's 13.3. 13 millimeters is the sweet spot for a dive piece with 200 meters of water resistance because that means it will easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts and it doesn't feel top heavy. 13.3 is just above the sweet spot of 13 millimeters, but bear in mind this does have a double domed sapphire crystal which is boxed top hat profile and that does add one millimeter of thickness. Had they used a flat sapphire crystal, they could have got this down to 13, sorry, below 13. It would have been circa 12.5, but they've made the correct decision by using the box top hat profile because it does look very similar to a Black Bay 58 and it is very aesthetically pleasing. Nice curved undercut to the flanks. So there's a minimal gap underneath the tips of the lugs because we do have the female pivoted end links which articulate very well. They have made the correct decision by not using male end links. The female pivoted end links do give a superior fit. You can see that end link in the bracelet is pulling underneath the tips of the lugs. So on my eight inch wrist, it does give wrist presence, which is surprising because it's only 38 millimeters. Very similar to a Black Bay 58. The taper on the rivet link bracelet is correct. 20 down to 16 is the correct taper. Proportions of the flip lock clasp are good. And the luster is very good on the bracelet and it contrasts very well with the mirror polished flanks. I like the fact it doesn't have slab sides, often with Chinese watches. They have tall slab sides when they use the NH35A because it is a thick movement and therefore the head of the piece needs to have the thickness to house it. But the flanks to this case are actually low profile. They're very similar proportions to the Black Bay 58 and I like that. I like that the flanks are not tall slab sided as per the Black Bay. They look more like a Black Bay 58. The flanks are lower profile, they're slimmer and the curved undercut is done very well. I love the way the coin edge bezel catches the light and it's also got a nice chamfer to it and I like the way the bezel is matte ceramic. It looks more like aluminium rather than being glossy ceramic because glossy ceramic really wouldn't look right on an homage to a Black Bay 58. The matte ceramic gives it an aluminium bezel insert look which is like the Black Bay 58. Legibility is good and I like the clear AR coating and one can clearly read the snowflake hands very aesthetically pleasing piece. Feels good, well balanced, doesn't feel top heavy, and the bracelet feels very comfortable. I like that it doesn't pull arm hairs, no sharp edges to the links, and the flanks are very well deburred and chamfered. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged, and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is clearly five to six layers of BGW9 on the applied indices and also the Snowflake handset. And credit where credit's due, Militado deserve special credit here because 
The matte ceramic bezel insert is fully inlaid with BGW9. The first quarter minute ticks, the loom pip triangle, and also the Arabic numerals. They are loomed to a very high standard. They look crisp, high definition. They're not blurry. So the quality of the engraving to the ceramic is high definition. The quality of the infilling of the BGW9 in the engraving is also done to a high standard. Good colour tone match between the ceramic bezel inserts the indices and the handset. The blue of the BGW9 matches good. I like that it's not darker blue or lighter blue. All three, the ceramic bezel, the indices and the snowflake hands. The blue looks a similar tone. Of course, one is going to get a slightly different tone on the minute ticks and the Arabic numerals because with a ceramic bezel insert, there isn't enough depth to apply five to six layers, the same as the large plots on the applied indices and the snowflake hands. So you're not going to get as much BGW9 inlaid into the engravings. Uh, so it's acceptable there is a slight mismatch in the brightness of the BGW9. But I think it's very good. It's very aesthetically pleasing. They could have used the cost-cutting measure of not having a loomed bezel. They could have just made it matte ceramic and just loom pip and triangle loomed. Um, but they haven't. They've actually engraved the Arabic numerals and the minute six and then infilled them with BGW9, which is expensive. It does raise production costs. And I think at 99 euro, they really deserve credit for that because it's somewhere they it's, a, it's an area they could have cut costs, but they didn't. And the quality of the BGW9 is excellent. As you can see, it's glowing brightly and it will continue to glow for a good length of time. So for a low tier piece, this is very good. Right, so let's discuss the movement use because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. You'll all be familiar with the Seiko NH35A automatic. It has 24 joules, it runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 3 hertz. It has hand winding and hacking, which is used for complications, and the stated accuracy is minus 20 to plus 40 seconds per day, so rather wide accuracy range. However, I'm pleased to report that Militado are doing an excellent job regulating the NH35As they're using. This one is running consistently at plus 6 seconds per day, which is excellent accuracy for an NH35A. Plus 6 is well within the minus 20 to plus 40 stated accuracy. So, good movement. Now, however, I would prefer to see, as I've detailed, the NH38 used, which is the no-date version. In terms of cost, the 38 costs the same as the 35A when bought at wholesale prices in bulk. So, therefore, it wouldn't increase the production cost for Militado by using the 38. The benefit of using the 38 is it would delete the phantom date setting position. On, so, there wouldn't be two clicks on the crown. You would just have one click to hack the movement to set the time. So with no date pieces like this, I prefer the 38. But however, I do appreciate uh, Militado are producing this ML06 in a date complication version. There is a gilt version which has a date complication at six. So of course it makes it easier for them just to use one movement only, the 35A for the date and the no date versions. I understand the reasoning behind it. But I would personally prefer the 38 just to delete the phantom date setting position. Good, reliable, solid, well-proven well workhorse movement, plus six is acceptable, no reliability issues. The NH35A has been in use since 2011, so it's had 13 years of service at this stage and therefore there are no reliability reports. It's a very robust movement and the correct choice for this piece. I'm pleased that they got it down to 13.3. So I'll show you the case back. One would expect a bubble back profile because this is 200 meters of hermetic seal and as you can see solid 316L grade stainless steel case back and it does have concentric CNC lathe tool machining to it which is very good I like the way it refracts the light and it does have a bubble back case back which is necessary because it does have slender flanks to the case and a double domed box top hat crystal in order to house the thickness of the NH35A it does need a deep bubble back case back rather than the flat case back. No sharp edges, no burrs. The coin edge finishing is high definition, very similar to the coin edge finishing on the bezel. So I like the fact it's been very well chamfered and deburred, and it's very well finished. It feels smooth and comfortable against the wrist. And we've got standard spring bars rather than quick release spring bars um, in the female pivoted end links, but there's good access to the spring bars with the large milled slots in the end links. So very well finished case back, feels comfortable against the wrist. So lastly, I'll summarise the piece. What do I think of it overall? 
Well, it's strong specification at €99 Euro because we have good quality BGW9, fully loomed matte ceramic bezel insert, 200 meters. The clear AR coating works well. Screw down crown is smooth, so the execution is good. The bezel execution is excellent. No lateral side side play, no back play alignment is correct. So these are the strong points of the piece. The main negatives are the female pivoted end links, as you can see, because there's too much play, they rattle. So that needs addressing. The quality control is poor. The other negative is the lack of micro adjustment. This would be better enhanced if it had a glide lock style mechanism as per the watch dives glide lock style class by previously reviewed. It needs to be signed and also the crown needs to be signed either engraved or embossed with a Militado emblem. So there are some cost cutting measures but one has to be realistic. This is 99 euro. In order to make those enhancements Militado would have to increase the price to 120 to 130 euro per piece and of course it faces some stiff competition in the low tier at circa 99 euros so it's a competitive piece but the main three aspects are satisfied crown execution bezel execution and loom performance they are the three key elements i look for when reviewing a dive piece the end links and the sterile clasp and the lack of micro adjustment one can accept because 99 euro is excellent value so I'm going to declare it excellent value and I'm going to say the quality is good I'm not going to say the quality is excellent because of the end links if they tightened up the tolerances and the quality control with the end links I would upgrade it from good to excellent value so I'm going to recommend it to you for your consideration I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Militado ML06 please feel free to post your own comments below the video thank you for watching